I'm the hairier out of the two of us. That's true. And the smellier. Not on the not and the smellier <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Ten hundred percent on that. Ten hundred. Whoa. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Merriman Podcast, where you join a couple of married creatives having very candid conversations after their baby has gone to sleep. We're making up for lost time. I'm Carly, and this week we are reuniting after Johnny was gone on a work trip to Vietnam, and Forrest and I were gone to visit family in Alberta, so we've got some catching up to do. In this episode, we talk about the shitstorm that was the last hundred kilometers of our road trip. Johnny talks about how different fresh shrimp tastes pulled straight from the Vietnamese mangroves. We talk about how we handle embarrassment differently and why loving your partner's smell is a good thing. We hope you enjoy it, and if you do, hey, do us a quick solid and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks for listening, and join the merriment. And we're, we're, we're on. We're on, <laughs> we're on the... This sounds so familiar. Yeah, it's familiar. This is our 10th recorded, 11th release. 11th. 11th released. I guess we were 10th recorded. recorded? Did we not record the first one or something? No, oh, I see. The one yesterday was from, or yesterday. Oh my <laughs> gosh. The one last week was from. It was recorded just a very long time 40, ago. Five years ago or mm-hmm. something. Did Crazy. You, did you end up listening to that one? No. No. No, I was just too busy. Mm-hmm. And that's not j- an excuse. I was actually busy. <laughs> yeah. No, you sounded <laughs> extremely busy over there. So busy that when you got home, your body was like, now can I get really sick? Really, yeah. really sick? Yeah. Now can I just like empty empty you out <laughs> and just like just completely empty you? And, it was like, yeah. and I was like, yes, you yeah. can. <laughs> <laughs> and it did. It happened. And you I, just slept and slept. I slept and emptied and slept. And Forrest was just like in the bed next to you, just looking at you being like, Dada. <laughs> That's Dada, right? Yeah. We, we, we know Dada. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he had his first experience going away. Uh, uh, being away from me. Being you away for... from me and then seeing me again, which is pretty cool. Oh my gosh. That was so cute. That was you pretty just, awesome. Like, you never really know what it's going to be like because... You know, a, a week out of uh, like one and a bit year old baby's life is actually like a pretty large fraction of their whole experience in life. Yeah. So he was without you for an entire week. And when you travel, time slows down, even for us. So imagine what it would be like for a baby. Right. Because the time is already pretty slow for them. Or at yeah. least they, you know, because every day there's something brand new. And when there's something new, it takes longer for our brain to process. And so it feels longer. Yeah. And so. Well, especially because we were away. Like if we were home and you were gone, maybe it would have felt, I don't know, like it all blended together a bit. Yeah. But we were gone visiting family and he was like getting pushed over by his cousin and experiencing all this great stuff with his uncle and and cousins other cousins and stuff so you know he had lots of new experiences yeah. and then all of a sudden but he he never forgot about you I just want to say like Aww. while we were gone it was constantly talk about dada like oh good every time we went would go to bed and we'd be like i'm putting him down for sleep suddenly he would just like touch my arm and look at me in the eyes and be like dada like we haven't forgot about dada right <laughs> like we have a dada i'm like yep yeah, yeah definitely dada we love him. He's gone right now, but he's coming back soon. Oh, and then so there was cute. times it was like we'd get in the car and just be driving from one short spot to another. And he'd just like lean back in his chair and look out the window and just go, ah, dada. Aww. <laughs> it was like he was just like dreaming for the day. It, it was basically like this baby's gone off on a hero's journey, like this great big adventure. But he's just like looking forward to the time when he sees dada again. I love that. I think that's, yeah, that makes my heart warm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and for me too, it was just, it was nice to know that he was always thinking about you. I'm sure there were some like dadas in there that were actually not about you because that's one of, I don't know, five syllables that he can say. Yeah. But what for the could most dada part, mean? What would dada mean to him? Pretty dada. sure that Abby is also dada. Okay. Her cousin Abby. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense, Abby. So, and he was a little bit in love with her. So maybe he was actually daydreaming about her. Could be. I'm totally open to that possibility. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh man. But like uh, this time that we had in the car, Forrest has hated the car since he was a tiny little baby. Hated. Just like losing his mind. It's hell. It but was, he was actually baby hell for him. Yeah, for real. Like, and he, he's not like a bad baby, but he just in the car, right? The first time we ever took him in the car when he was five days old, he lost his mind. Yeah, it was, it was pretty horrifying. Yeah. For so us too. totally. But this road trip was actually not too bad. He did a, like, 
it was almost like because we were going to so many new places and like his whole world was being rocked like the only anchor that he really had anymore was me because you know dada's not even with us yeah wow. and we're like at a hotel and then we're somewhere else again and um the car became his like safe space oh sweet which was awesome so we'd get in the car and he'd just like chill the f out and he'd be oh, like awesome. all right but on the way home between like chilliwack and vancouver when it was just me lost his mind again oh, didn't he like puke all over himself oh, yeah, too he, oh, well geez. i just felt like i was trapped coming home in the car because i came <clears throat> I came from Chilliwack. He starts crying like almost immediately. And so I pulled over like, I don't know, 20 minutes later, get gas. I'm like, here, bud, we'll hang out. We'll have a nice time. I'll give you a nurse. I'll try and make it more comfortable, whatever. Get back in the car, starts crying again. And then oh, it happened like again. We had to stop again. And finally, I was like, you know what? We're making it all the way home right now. You're going to cry. I understand that. That's fine. It's just going to have to be what it is because when we get home, you're going to be happy. So we're driving, oh. he's crying, losing his mind, barfs all over himself. I'm oh, like, well, no. I can't keep driving now. Oh, man, that's so uh, traumatic. Could you imagine just like if that happened to you as an adult? Just like so upset, just crying. Oh, and to the point where you just vomit my everywhere. Gosh, yeah. oh. And as like you, the protector of this kid, like biologically in yourself, you are wired to be just like so protective of this kid when they're going through something like you want to help yeah and so just for me to be going against that instinct of like stopping when he's crying and then all of a sudden he's barfing on himself i'm just like oh, oh, okay that's, that's enough oh but that's the only the time he f I, so i stopped and cleaned him up and we hung out for like another half hour i'm in langley and i'm just like i'm never gonna get home I'm just like, at one point, my sister, who I had just dropped off in Chilliwack, is like, just go to our mom's place. It's like 20 minutes away. I'm like, yeah, but then I'm going to be stuck there. Yeah. And I oh, just no. want to go home. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. But you made it home. Made it home. and Good. But he was like still screaming all the way. And then to the point where he was like starting to hyperventilate and started like choking. Ugh. And so all of a sudden, I just got this like, I'm, I've had it. And he's about to like hurt himself with crying. And I just in this deep booming voice was like, that's enough, Forrest. Whoa. And he just stopped. Whoa. And he just kind of like looked out the window and laughed a little bit. <laughs> he's just like, ha ha. ha. <laughs> that was weird. He fussed a couple more times, but I like kept that voice and was just like, that's enough. Wow. And then he, he was f just like fell asleep for the last 10 minutes of the drive, which great. Finally, you're going <sighs> to nap. So we got home and we park after like a week from being home, uh, away from home, slept in the car. Wow. Like I, I just napped in the car with him because Aww. I was like, well, you finally fell asleep. I'm not going to wake you up and bring you in. Man, you really exercised authority, like real authority. Yeah. Like that's like a, a new level of mom came out. Totally. Wow. And it was a really interesting experience because I'm, I'm always trying to be so compassionate. Like you never know quite what they're going through, right? So yeah. just like, a, you know, this um, Janet Lansbury's book, um, this Respectful Parenting book, Elevated Child, uh, Child Care, I think it's, it's called. It sounded like you said Disrespectful Parenting. The, this, this <laughs> Respectful, <laughs> Disrespectful Parenting, you know, it's my jam. Like I'm really I've been reading, reading a, a lot book, about yeah. it. Just how to be disrespectful as a parent. You know, it's just, <laughs> just all about. Just let them cry, just let them cry. Just telling them that their feelings don't matter, you know, <laughs> like you can't do anything and now let me do that for you. Yeah. But no, this book um, by Janet Lansbury, Elevated Child Care, I believe it's called, um, it talks a lot about just acknowledging that they're feeling something right just saying you know i hear you you're feeling sad you're feeling frustrated you know not just constantly trying to solve their problem right off the bat like we're almost there we're almost there whatever you know you're fine those types of things is really really just kind of um belittling and doesn't acknowledge their feelings so i'm always trying to be compassionate and just you know be like okay you're going through something i get it but at a certain point i'm just like I don't care if you're going through something, you're hurting yourself. You need to get a hold of yourself right now. So I don't know. It just kind of came out and it felt like a new boundary was drawn. Wow. So I, I might be pulling out that mom voice again. Now wow. I know where the mom voice comes yeah, from. Yeah, because moms do have that voice, you know, yeah. and you, if you, it's like a powerful thing within you. And yeah. didn't you say it felt a little bit like giving birth too? Is that same? You're channeling oh, that same energy? Totally. Well, because... When I was um, when I was getting ready to go into labor, um, like I don't know, a few weeks before, I read something about toning, which is right. when you are um, using vocal expression to 
um, work through a lot of the um, intensity that you're going through. And it talks about toning, n- not getting high in your tones. Right. So not getting up high because that's when you start to feel out of control. Instead, keeping it really low and deep with your sounds. And, um, and that really helps to keep you grounded, keep you in control. And so when I finally raised my voice at forest it was it it was in like a deep low commanding tone rather than like a forest stop yeah you know wow and um, And if i think about it if somebody was coming at me with a high pitched or like a scream it mm, would be like run away from that thing you know it's like fear but if somebody was more controlled with their voice then it would it would yeah, yeah the likelihood of me listening and acting is is much greater yeah you know what? I wish you would have been there because I don't know. Either you'd have more respect for me, or you'd just be really scared of me. <laughs> <laughs> or you know, it wouldn't have happened. Maybe it was just something that you needed to do on your own. Yeah. Well, and I've kind of started to pull out a little bit more because he's going through a new developmental leap, and uh, so he's just. Whenever they go through these leaps, it's like that their brains are. Um, they're going through a new thing that they are able to. Pro- after they're done this leap, he'll be able to process more things in his little baby brain. Wow. So, but while he's going through the leap, there's a lot of um, rough times that he's having. Like he just ends up becoming crankier and clingier and fussier. Sometimes his sleep will suffer and other things like that because his world is being rocked a little bit. Do you think that has something to do with the fact that he's all of a sudden afraid of the bath? Could be. Like all of a sudden he's like aware of something else. Like he's like, he hears more things or maybe he's processing... um, like, oh, if I go in there, I'm, I might slip. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And like that, the past of him slipping in the bath, they're kind of yeah. it's reminding him of that fear. Yeah. Huh. Just or to fill pain. you in, Forrest is like uh, totally terrified of the bath now. Which like is he does weird. not, because he was enjoying it before. Well, he didn't have any fear. He would stand up, he'd splash around. He'd then do he slept he twice wants. in a row in the bath. Like two bath times in a row, he slipped. And it's game over after that. Yeah. So, but I know, I think you're right. I think while his you know typically what i've observed with forrest as he's going through these developmental leaps is he always seems just like rocked a little bit because he's his foundation is unsteady while his his brain is trying to adapt to these new things so i could see how something that's a little shaky for him right now like the bath would be especially scary as he's going through this new leap oh yeah Mm -hmm. baths can be scary how do we make the bath less scary that's the thing because we can't just not bath him and i don't want to sit through just a terrified child while i bathe him well we might just bath him less for the next little while until he's done this leap because he but also i think just in general we're 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 bathing him like near bedtime and he's just extra cranky lately especially around bedtime so it's just Ah. maybe we just don't bath him around bedtime maybe we bath him in the morning if yeah. you have any tips for us, please let us know. Yeah. Well, actually, <laughs> what I did recently was because I need to shower sometime too. You do? And, well, I don't know. You I mean, shower? I, no. I mean, well, here and there. Wow. But when I do need to shower, <laughs> I um like I either have to do it while he's napping, which I usually like to do like other productive things while he's napping. Um, but if I, so, if I want to do other stuff, or if I want to nap while he's napping because I haven't gotten a good sleep then I'm not going to shower, obviously. Right. Yeah. So, you can't shower and nap at the same time. Exactly. That's just dangerous. I, if That's if anyone knows how you can do that, actually, please let me know. I'd Snorkel. love to combine a few things. Yeah. Oh, hey. Man, you could you imagine having a nap float. in a bath? That'd be incredible. Go to, go to the float house. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. But a bath is different because it's warm. It's like a blanket. Float is like, yeah. oh, don't feel anything. Yeah, totally. But maybe where, that's where good. Where am I? Maybe. Man, the last time I did a float, it was so bad. I know. It just turned me off from floating. It's supposed to be sensory deprivation, right? But it was just like there's like light coming in from the door and you could hear like, sh- I don't know. It was just bad. You could hear sounds. And there I was, was like, light this, coming yeah. in from the door. You were a little bit cold. Your head was sinking a little bit, you yeah. said, right? And it was like 45 minutes or longer than No, it's it was an hour and out. a half. And I was like, uh, I'm bored. No, just get into it. Oh Meditate. My gosh. And I'm like, no, this, oh. No, I need to work on myself. No, this just and then at the end I was like, this I'm cold. P- this sucks. This this and we've we I've been to better floats where it has been incredible, mm-hmm. but this one was just like just what? jumping on the bandwagon and not doing it well. And so we had bought two of those because I was like, woo, Groupon, Groupon, you know, some, more like poop on. 
<laughs> I hate Groupon. We've, we've had this such just, bad experiences uh, with Groupon. It happens a lot where you're like, wow, this looks great. Because you know what it is? Groupon uses these like fancy looking images. Yeah. And you're just like, ooh, wow, that looks like the best spa. But you're like, these are stock images that they're using. Yeah. This is not an image from the spa that I'm going to. Yeah. And so then you have an experience like that. And you're like, oh, yeah. Group, or there have was a, a time. Groupon experience. I hate yeah, Groupon. Yeah. There was a time I huh. went to. Um, could get like a no I, you know what i'm not gonna no, say i, I should be We've gotten i shouldn't some, be bad we enjoyed paint night that was good you know that wasn't a poop on that yeah, was we got that on. through groupon um we would have enjoyed the rock chip repairs on our windshield if icbc hadn't changed the laws to make them free oh really <laughs> oh well there we go uh, at least they're free do we get a refund? I don't want to talk about this. It's boring. No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I love it when you say that something we're talking about is boring. Yeah, this is boring. Is it? It's, is it it's far more interesting than most of the things we talk about when we're not talking about on this podcast. Yeah, maybe. Man, <laughs> I just got to say right now, I'm having a hard time. I, <laughs> I just like, for some stupid reason, just binge ate a whole bunch of yogurt oh man right before i was like oh this is so good because oh, it has sugar it. in it and i know it's so bad it's so bad but you know what it is it's my fault i bought our yogurt which is the our one we yogurt. always get it's like the crema 11.5 we always get this percent. yogurt and it's the best yogurt it's the best yogurt it's the plain one no sugar a big bin of it it's got a black lid and so i went to go stock up and get some more of it bring it home johnny looks at it he's like this is vanilla this is sweet no. and i was i was i was upset that i don't know if me. you know this but johnny's on the ketogenic diet yeah. so he doesn't <laughs> well, eat sugar well, I, I <laughs> he doesn't eat carbs I don't know. Well, i'm kind of I'm, <laughs> oh, I've, no. I've been breaking from it oh you've been uh, look at that you gotta just not look at it and drink You're, it <laughs> <laughs> i'm just okay the, the, for those of you listening i made myself a delicious white russian but with um coconut milk instead oh. of cream and it's just, it's separating right now. So it actually just looks like um, a coagulated um, mess of, I don't know, bone marrow or something. Oh, man. That reminds me. <laughs> uh, I'm sure really it tastes good. Let's have it separate. Bone marrow. Yeah. Doesn't taste like it. It's great. Oh, good. Yeah. That reminds me, we have these friends and they're they're successful musicians and they, they whenever we go to uh, over to their place, they always make us these awesome cocktails. Mm -hmm. And it's, and for some reason... Whenever they come over here, we make them the most disgusting <laughs> cocktails. The what? first, yeah, okay, well, it's happened twice. <laughs> what did we and make? I don't times remember. I didn't finish it. Um, <laughs> oh, the first so time we were we were just like so into gin martinis, and we're like, yeah, we like it dirty. We like to put the uh, um, olive juice in, and then for this one, we <laughs> we bought um olives with oil in it in the base instead of just like olive juice and so we made them these gin martinis and just like poured like this like <laughs> olive, oil, olive, olive oil with the herbs in it and then it's just like this most <laughs> gloopy disgusting and we're like try it it's great i don't remember it being that oh uh, i remember being so embarrassed and then this last time <laughs> we I got was, really drunk and snuggled at the end of it that's true oh yeah it but it good. was it was embarrassing because every time we go over there it's like oh yeah try this manhattan no Oh yeah, look at this homemade za. Now we made this from scratch. Cha cha cha, and it's like, wow, that is really good. Shout and, out Drew and Danielle McTaggart. Yeah. great, great mixologists. Yes, and then Drew, this last actually, time, Drew. I'm sure, I'm sure D can. I'm whip sure up Danielle a can for sure mix D as in drink. I don't think I've ever seen her do it, but I'm sure I'm she sure can. She could. <laughs> I'm sure she could. Just like, but she won't. She wouldn't. You know, because she just she? that's Drew's thing. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, exactly. But uh, anywho, this last time, I was like, for some reason, I was like, I'm going to try something new. So I, <laughs> I was like, okay. I'm, and I was off sugar. So I was like, I'm going to experiment with something. Oh. And then I made like this. Was, this sounds horrible. It was a cream soda. You no, know, it was. Yeah. And I was like, I want to make some like cream soda. And so like I took gin on ice and then I mixed it with soda water and then cream and then stevia and then lemon. And it's like that doesn't sound that bad. It, it it tasted okay, but it like separated and looked just like it was some, like neither of them tasted that bad, but they looked just disgusting. It's so bad when they Any, yeah. And yeah, anytime you drink separate and then there's like little 
little bits that get on, on the side. That's of exactly the glass. what my drink looks like I know, right now. And now, it, you know what? You need to try these drinks alone in a situation like this, where I can look at it and be like, "That looks disgusting. I won't serve this to anybody." <laughs> but if you close your eyes, if you drink it in the dark, it tastes great. That's right. Can I try? Yeah. All right. It's quite delicious. Oh yuck! It looks gross. I know, right? <laughs> But it tastes just great. So if you're wondering what goes into a white Russian, it's super simple. It's delicious. And the dude drinks it. So why shouldn't you? Why shouldn't you? It's Kahlua, vodka, cream, basically. Very simple. Mm-hmm. Very delicious. Equal parts Kahlua and equal vodka. Equal parts Kahlua, Although, vodka, and I actually cream. didn't look that up. I just winged that. So I'm Whoa. assuming it's equal parts. Well, and you didn't use, the reason why it might look gross is because you didn't use real cream. You mm-hmm. used coconut cream. Mm-hmm. Normally, it just like blends together very well. So anyways, uh, my tummy hurts. Yeah. From all that yogurt. Um, it's slowly getting a little bit better. This mint tea is, is helping me a little bit. Is that bit. our baby? Yeah. Oh. Shit. Crap. Let's wait it out. Let's see. Should we just wait it out? So he's he's just like crawling around oh, on the bed. He's sitting he's up. He's sitting up. I got to go in there. Oh, Baba. Hi. Okay. Okay. Talk to you soon. And we're back. Carly's back from the bedroom. The baby's asleep. Hooray. Good Woo-hoo. job. You did you did great. That didn't even take long. No, it was really fast. So what do you think what what, what do you think happens? What why does he do that? Why does he wake up? I often wonder. I really that is a complete mystery to me. Dreams? Do babies have dreams? It must have. Oh my gosh. Like I feel like I can't go down this road because it'll befuddle me so much that I will just obsess about it. Yeah. I just I just have to I feel like this is a, a, like a lot of things in parenting. You just have to take it for what it is. You're just like, okay, because you know when I start to um like get worked up about things is when I think am I doing the right thing? Is this the right decision that I'm making right now? Um and if I start to wonder why he's waking up, I might be like, maybe it's because I just always go to him and maybe we need to sleep train and all of these things. And I just don't want to go down that road because no. it's just going to make me stress the hell out. And I'm pretty okay with the situation yeah. now. So what do you think it's, what, what if it's ghosts? I mean, you know what? It could totally be ghosts. Just actually. like ghosts that tickle him. He's like, no, I want to <laughs> sleep. And then you got to get in there with your mom energy and be like, get out of here ghosts. And then they're like, ah, no, I just want to tickle baby. Yeah. It, you know, it very well could be that. It yeah. could also be that like, He's cold or, but right. there's so many things, it's you know, as cool as babies ghosts. can do so many things for themselves. Like they can't even push the blankets off of themselves they effectively. Can't even push them. Can you believe it? What? You know, what a about bunch, a bunch of, of babies? Babies. <sighs> can't even Just push. They can't even. Can't push the blankets, push off, the blankets themselves. off themselves. They can't like take their own pants off. They don't even have their driver's licenses. It's like, get they can't drink a beer. Grow up. Grow up. Get on it. <sighs> but yeah, actually. There are so many things that babies can't do for themselves that it would be so frustrating. Like I remember when um, I was first trying to figure out how to breastfeed and I likened it to when I was in labor and you kept trying to give me my cup with a bendy straw and I'd have to be like, no, lift it up, no, lower, bring it closer. Right. Because in order for you to comfortably drink out of a straw, the cup needs to be like a certain height in relevance to your face and all of these things. And um, if it's not right, then it's very uncomfortable. And I was able to use my words to explain to you how I needed you to adjust what you were doing. Babies don't have that ability. No, they they can't like use their words to say, it's just that I'm a little bit cold or like, you know, I'm, I'm uncomfortable on this side and I want to move over onto the other side now. Or, you know what I mean? It's like, Especially when you're a half asleep baby, because when I'm a, a half asleep baby, <laughs> I can hardly roll over. You know, I can hardly move the blankets. Oh my gosh! Speaking of which, last night you did one of those things again, where I you slept, sat up yeah. and you started sleep talking, and you I, were just really adamant about something, and I was not having it. I was just like, I started to like shove you back down, <coughs> like just like. I remember to pu- what it was. Push you down, just like go go back to sleep, and you were like, oh, and you, you kind of like rolled your shoulder away from my hand like oh no no i need to do this i'm like no you don't johnny you're just sleeping you know what it was um because recently i was in vietnam working Mm. um and it's very physical work because i was filming a lot you know so it's like managing gear and i had to really be on you know Mm -hmm. there's a lot it was just me doing the filming so i had to really be focused that i had all my gear with me and that i was i had enough 
batteries and I had enough cards. And at the end of the night, I'd had to, I just had a lot to think of Mm -hmm. just on my own. And, uh, um, that because of the time difference in the middle of the night would, would have been when I was doing that. So like, maybe that's like kind of jet lag mixed in a little bit with my sleepwalking. Cause my dreams are me working like yesterday, but it was like, like, cause I'm in my underwear in bed and I w- had a dream that I was like waiting in the lobby with all my camera gear to go shoot something. And then all of a sudden all the lights turned off and I was in my underwear. I was like, no, Oh, I, I need to wear, I need to get dressed. And then I, <laughs> I actually stood up and I was like, <laughs> these aren't my, dressed. these aren't proper clothes for what I have. Ah, and then I like put on a shirt and then I was like, ah, and then I just laid down oh back down and went to bed. And then I woke up and I was like, Oh, I didn't, I normally don't go to sleep with a shirt on oh my gosh you actually put your clothes on and got into bed oh my goodness this is so reflective i feel like of what being on this trip was like for you it was it's funny because we were like "Ooh, you're going on this trip how exciting all expenses paid la 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 it was so busy it sounded it wasn't a vacation it was awesome because it was an amazing experience it sounds like it was really cool, and it was. It's funny because when we were on our marathon honeymoon, five months, the one thing that drove us crazy was that there was like a whole bunch of time where we weren't working, or yeah. we felt like we didn't have a purpose. Mm-hmm. And it was like, ugh, like what do we do? Like you, there's only so many temples or beaches or whatever you can see. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, and so I remember. We were like, the next time we come back here, we're going to be working. And then he was like, oh, yeah, I'm back in Southeast Asia Mm -hmm. and I'm working. And it's like intense and it's cool. Um, But I would love a vacation now. Yeah, I know. You (laughs) probably could really use one. Yeah, it's about the balance. Yeah. So, but it was, it was not so. I'm, I feel wiped out after my trip and i know you feel wiped out after your trip and then you came home and were sick so you're wiped out from that yeah and i wiped out sick. from because then forrest got sick forrest woke up the other night puking um this has just been a gong so, show in the jansen household and i i had thought when i got home i was gonna have like a couple days with you because you were going to take a couple days off after all of that work. Yeah. And I was like, all right, so we're both like going to be taking care of Forrest as a family and getting back into the swing, but you were completely out of commission. No. Yeah. And now Forrest has gotten sick. And so I've, I've just, I'm exhausted also. (laughs) I'm still kind of out of commission, but it's just like, I'm, I'm still on that busy train. I'm still just like, okay, got so many moving parts. Yeah, you almost can't let down, you, mm. you you can't let the momentum fall, hey? No, I can't. You did a little bit while you were sick and you were worried That's that scary. it wasn't going to come back again. Yeah, there was a point where I was just like, thought about all the things I have to do and I got like, for the first time, I felt that very familiar, kind of anxious, like, oh no, what if I fail? What if everything, but then, because I guess I've, I've gotten, yeah, I guess in the last year I've I've gotten good at, overcoming that voice mm-hmm. and just believing in myself i guess and it came back a little bit and i was like oh no no you gotta just push through and it was because of the exhaustion mm-hmm. and as soon as like m- my body went um in the recovery direction is when i all of a sudden got the hope and faith that i could do it all yeah. and you know what i it's just a matter of delegation that's a big thing I'm learning right now. It's just delegate. You don't have to sacrifice your uh, your vision or your creativity um, by delegating. Yeah. That is really Period. good advice. <laughs> I feel like it really helps to actually have a crew or like um, people around you that you know that you can delegate to as opposed to if you are, you know, kind of an island in what you're working on. And there's nobody to delegate to. You have to find those people and you have to, yeah. you know, m- make that delegation possible. That's yeah. it's a bit more difficult. So right now there's, I'm working with uh, two editors at the same time for two different projects at the exact same time, which I could never normally do on my own. And I had to remind myself, it's like, no, all I have to do is kind of, which is a whole different level of exhaustion is like the, like, holding the vision and making the making decisions and it's and it's i used to always go with my gut but it's not it's it's a bit more than just going with your gut you got to do your you got to do your prep work beforehand you got to really make make some decisions in your mind which can be really hard sometimes but at the end of the day like so much about 
for me anyways, creativity is informed decision making. And with that, you got to kind of like swim in the energy of the project Hmm. before you can make those decisions. Man, you and I live such different lives right now. It's so (laughs) crazy. (laughs) This is the crazy thing. Equally exhausting though. Yeah. Yeah. And like I can really recognize how exhausting your world is. And I don't know if you can recognize how exhausting mine is. I feel like. Yes, I can. To be honest, I feel like, um, and I know that a lot of other moms feel this way too, Typically, the like stay at home parent is not nearly as like recognized as having so much pressure or right. like exhaustion or actually, yes, I did do a lot today or you yeah. know what I mean? Like instead it's looked at like what you mean you just don't have to work. Yeah. You know what I mean, but it's not like, just that. I mean, I think from the partner standpoint too, like it's, it's harder. You talk about all of these things that you're doing and in the mindset that I'm in right now with Forrest, I can't, I'm like, Oh my gosh, to do all of those things sounds so impossible. Yeah. You know, although not impossible if I actually had all the time or if you had a nanny designated to do all yeah. of that stuff. But, um, it's just like not the world I'm living in right now. But I think for other people too, a lot of people think like, Oh, you go for coffee with your friends and you have naps with your baby. And you know, that's what you do when you're a stay at home parent. And it would bore you to tears for me to tell you all of the things that go on in my day that make it really busy or frustrating or like, huh. You know, like I had a super impotent day today because of all of these, you know, things that I tried to start doing and then Forrest suddenly decided he wanted to nap and but then he wouldn't nap and you know what I mean? Just right. stupid little things like that that completely usurp your day and exhaust you and drain you or like how you, you know, maybe there's a day that Forrest is so cranky that he's hanging on to my ankles all day all and day. that just like drains you in a totally different way. But they're they're not like as eventful to talk about. So it just doesn't get recognized and you know you supposedly have a somewhat easy life or there's the cliche of like being a mom's a full-time job though you know and then it's just like anyway you know we don't understand what that means but yeah yeah you know what i mean it's a very it's a very strange thing because i feel like there's so many mom cliches out there and i feel like i was a very non-cliche kind of person before becoming a mom and now i've just like gotten sloughed off into this like cliche category it's very strange how does that make you feel? Um, I feel maybe gender oppressed for the first time in my life. Wow. Yeah. A wow. little bit. Yeah, it's just um I mean, I understand that it's partly just because I am the stay at home parent. I'm right. sure where the roles are reversed in a lot of cases, um, you know, the the male would be feeling this Maybe the men would feel like, Oh, I'm I'm like I guess it, it's like you they look around at their peers and be like because stay-at-home dads are i don't know any do you know any mm, i've heard of no some. i mean we know we know that couple that we met at our workshop the um the two gay men who you know one of well, them was the stay-at-home dads. parent yeah yeah, 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 yeah exactly yeah, totally. so they would be you know feeling it just as a man but that's but you're parent. you're going after the one year of maternity leave mm-hmm. like that choice of leaving your job yeah that, well, that a, as which well, is yeah. very much a choice, you know, mm-hmm. and it's like over that, over getting like going into daycare, which we believe is the right decision, but it, it, it required a big sacrifice for one of us. And in our scenario, case, it was you who mm-hmm. took that bullet. So, yeah, I mean, I'm still breastfeeding and I want to do that until yeah. he's at least two. So like I couldn't, I couldn't do that. You, you couldn't know. breastfeed. I mean, you I mean, could I kind could of try. try. I think they've figured out how to get men lactating. I would love but it. Maybe. Would you love it? Well, I don't know. Let's ask. Forrest maybe that's what makes maybe that's what makes <laughs> babies a bit more whiny. Is what? Because you know how Forrest can see you and be like, "Oh, mommy." Yeah. Like I can go out with him uh, to the grocery store and just like he won't whine that much. But yeah. as soon as you enter the room, he's like, "He's like, oh, I just yeah. realized I have so many problems. So many problems. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which is draining as the parent that the baby whines to. Exhausting. Too. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I don't mean to whine about things. It's just it's just very interesting to observe. You like step into this new world um, that is shrouded in mystery to anybody who does not have a baby. 
Um, I remember before I became a mom, I was like, you know, I'm going to defy all these odds and I'm, I'm right. going to, you just think like, oh, I'm going to do things differently. Sure. Right. There's all these cliches, but once I get there, I'll figure out how to defy those. And then you're just like, oh my gosh, no, I'm just, I'm just one of the cliches. Yeah. It just is. <laughs> it's like that. Yeah, but the, you know what the thing reality. is though, is I would not sacrifice. Like I, it feels like the reason why you fall into these cliches is because you're not being selfish. You're just doing everything for your kid instead of for yourself. Right. So right now, I maybe I'm not doing as many um, career-focused things, which I still love doing that stuff, but I just kind of love my kid. I, ugh, I hate to say that I love my kid more because parents who are working right now, it's not like they love their kids any right. less than I do. Yeah. That's like a very condescending thing to say. And we're, but we're, we're, we are in a fortunate we just, situation we're where we can. We are, Some yes. people just straight up can't. It's like not even an option. I'm totally. sure they would love to. Yeah. And also, I think if Forrest was like a slightly different kind of kid, then, you know, maybe it would have been fine. But yeah. right, right from the early, uh, you know, early get-go when he was a tiny baby, he just... He was very emotionally cut about things. I've seen other people's babies that when they cry, they're just kind of like, ah, they're just, just kind of like, putting oh, out a bit of protest. Oh, Forrest on. just looks like he is being cut like traumatically to the heart. Oh, it's so bad. And as like an empath, a very, like I'm an, I'm a bit of an empath and right. that, and on top of it being his mom, I'm just like, I can't let that go down. So you know, he's a very emotional baby, so therefore we never ended up putting him in a crib. He, st he stays in bed with us. Sleeps in bed. He needs to nurse to go to sleep. And, you know, all of these things kind of add up to being like, if I were to just cut him off of seeing me full time and instead go in to work 10 hours a day, five days a week, that would just be, that, that would be a huge, like, cut to this baby who's very sensitive. Uh -huh. And... I'm very sensitive too. So I think like for both of us, it just would have, it would have hurt way too bad. So yeah. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm just a weak person or no, maybe I I'm... wouldn't say you're a weak person at all. Not even one bit. <laughs> just you're an empath. Yeah. I'm, I'm, That's what it is. I, I'm very empathetic in just like the way that it's detrimental. I remember one time I went into Superstore and I just like, I could not handle it. It was the one in Metrotown where Metrotown's already so busy as it is. And it's like, you go into Metrotown and you're like, woo, you just like ride on that energy if you're just gonna go clothing shopping or something. But when you're trying to get groceries before you go home and just get some like, get some shit done, a, a crazy busy superstore is not where you wanna no, be. So I went place. in and I just, I was like buzzing with everybody else's energy and it just wow. made me so anxious. Wow, anxious. Mm -hmm. I thought mm -hmm. you were going to be like, and it just made me feel amazing. And no. I wanted to go for a run. And no, no, wow. no, no, no. It was not good. I really didn't like it. Oh, geez. So is that like social anxiety? Yeah. Oh, I had a lot of social anxiety for a while there. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow. Especially like leading up to when I le left the peak. I right. had a lot of so I could Even I could around strangers? Oh, especially around strangers. Really? I get like it. I get it with it's like people I kind of know. Then mm. it's people who I've who I've talked to a couple times, first name basis, and it's like, well, I, don't, I shouldn't first say first name basis. Who 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 calls me Mister Jansen? Nobody. <laughs> Everybody's on a first name basis with me. Yeah, where does that I term wonder, even come from anymore? Yeah. Like, is, do only teachers say that now? Yeah. What if there's like a last name basis? <laughs> like I'm a like Mister Jan. You call me. You get to call me Mister Jansen now. <laughs> It's Mr. Jansen it's Mr. to Jansen. you. And I was like, oh, we're on last name basis. <laughs> or is that like a shun? You're just like, we're on a last name basis. Um, I only get to call you Mr. Jansen. <laughs> Can I call you Mr. Jansen sometimes? Please. No, it makes me feel like I'm getting a little bit gray in my beard. Mr. Jansen. Uh, yeah, I think you still need more gray in your beard before yeah. I start calling you that. <laughs> I, feel, I need a few more um, patches of hair on my back. <laughs> <laughs> I just found one. The oh other day. no! It's, I, I, every time you tell me that, you're like, I found a new patch of hair what? on your back. I push it away, and I'm just like, forget that, forget that. You are Put so that, forget about that. And you're I just so funny. You say every time I say that to you. You've said I've that only a said few that times. To you once. No, no, you've said that. No, a few because times. you only have two on your back. No, but you've mentioned it more than that. What? Maybe. Well, but not a chance. You have one patch that I noticed like a long time ago, but and do it you wasn't still saying notice it? you have a new Be patch real. on your Be back. Be real with me. When you see my back, you're like, oh, there's that patch. Every now and then. Oh, <laughs> see, I, like it's only when we talk well, about. What's it, wrong with that? Well, nobody wants a patch on their back. 
<laughs> Who wants a patch on their back? Uh, and not we me. all got our things, you know? Yeah. I've I got so. lengths that are constantly bruised, like constantly. Yeah, but that's just like, oh, I'm so clumsy. I'm, that's so cute. Oh. What? How is it cute? I don't know. It's, I wouldn't say that's like like having hair grow on your back in a weird way. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like so many men can relate to that, though. Yeah, hopefully. Or maybe they're just listening like, oh, that's a that's a condition. Well, if Johnny, got a patch back. I have like extremely hairy arms, so I wouldn't say extremely hairy. They're but extreme. Yeah, more, more so than I feel me. like they're like spider leg hairs coming out oh, of my arms. Yeah, they're more than I. I've I've classically classically. I'm the hairier out of the two of us. That's true. And the smellier. Not on the not and the smellier <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Ten hundred percent on that. Ten hundred. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Only because I don't really smell. You did smell the other day I though, I went, and I, I liked in, it. Yeah. That's the thing. I, I think. That, and you that know, was after like people, a sixteen-hour plane ride and like almost two days of no shower. Yeah. So people, if you're looking for the one, just make sure that you love what they smell like when they're sweaty. Actually, it's a fact that. Um, well, here's something interesting that I learned on a podcast. <laughs> so it's, <laughs> you know, look it up, Google it. I haven't. <laughs> but <laughs> um, uh, some people say, whoever these people are, <laughs> that a uh, deodorant could actually be resulting in us not finding our proper matches because we actually use our sense of smell to find proper like DNA compatible partners. Mm -hmm. And so, like, if you enjoy somebody's smell, their natural smell, their pheromones, like a, yeah, their pheromones, that's a sign that you are compatible mm -hmm. with them. And you know, maybe the fact that we like each other's smells and that we are well matched pheromonally, yeah, maybe that's the reason why our baby is like such a good such walker and good dancer. Boy. He's the best, you baby. know, <laughs> and the great, a great dancer. Our genes just mix well, you know, we yeah. were meant to be together and make good babies and a good dancing baby <laughs> at that. The best dancing he's, baby. Oh my goodness. His dance moves. He's just, he's actually started stomping now though when he oh, dances. So like he's just, poor he's neighbors. so Sorry, into, neighbors. and I just feel really bad for the neighbors. <laughs> he's just like, that is his new thing. And he, first well, thing when thing he is, wakes up, he asks for music. Ma, 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 ma. And then you put on music and he starts stomping. But now he's, he's graduated to the level of like, if he's not feeling this music anymore, he looks at you with like this look on his face and he goes, ma. Mom. Yeah, and you're like, oh, you want some different music now? Wow. Okay, we'll switch it up. Wow, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, he's what's his what's his move? The the pivot. He does a pivot. Oh, it's amazing. It's he actually started spinning pivot. yesterday too, because oh his cousin Conan spins, <gasps> and so he saw that and he actually sp spun a little bit last That's night. Was, Whoa. He did it at the grocery store while I was following him oh, around. He was just like, oh, you're spinning, and then people are laughing. <laughs> yeah, he's he is the <sighs> dancing baby. Yeah. He's the Uga Chaka baby from Alan McBeal. I don't know what that is. It was like this naked dancing baby, like terrible CG. Oh, it, oh okay, yeah. That's from Alan McBeal? Yeah. I thought that was just like Chaka, on the internet. Uga, Uga. I thought mm -hmm. that was... No, it was Alan McBeal. She made it. She did the design. She? Allie Do you know McBeal? who Alan McBeal is? <laughs> I have no idea who Alan McBeal is. <laughs> Alan McBeal was a show about Kalista Flockhart as a lawyer. Wait, wait, who's Allie McBeal? She's a lawyer. She's a fictional oh, character Allie in a TV show. I know, but Allie McBeal is, is a girl. the TV show. I know, but that's the name Allie McBeal is a female. Yes. Okay. You, have you met like, a male Allie? Yes. Oh. And you have too. <laughs> I have? <laughs> yeah. Who? Allie. He's a drummer. Oh, that Allie, like A L I. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> it's still Allie. <laughs> you know, I, I see words. I like actually see the letters. Wow, in your mind. Really? Where yeah. is it? Where do you see it? On Where my face? It? Yeah, it's Next kind of like a, just like it's kinda of like a cross Behind? like a filter across the whole screen of wow. my vision. That's crazy. Uh, I don't or maybe you. it's like it's actually like <laughs> white letters on a black screen that is just like dual vision. Oh wow. For real. So That's like I'm a visual person. Really? But yeah. Oh my god. Is gosh. that why you're good at spelling? Probably. Whenever I spell, it's just a guessing game. It's like, is that E or an I? Oh my gosh, no. that's crazy because it's just, you're shooting in the dark. No, yeah. I fully see the words. What? Yeah. I never, I'm just, it's for me, it's either muscle memory where it's like, da, 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 da. okay, that's what it is. Or I'm like, <gasps> shoot, is it an, uh, like uh, E, I, oh I, Oh my gosh, e, e, crazy. E's wow. Eyes. Brains work C's so differently. Jeez. So fascinating <laughs> how differently brains work. Yeah. Oh my gosh, here's a funny story though. <laughs> <laughs> talking about spelling so in grade four i i um there was like this big spelling test 
50 words and I got them all right. Oh, wow. I was the only person in the class that got them all right. And um, so my teacher said, why don't you make um, a word search? I I was going to make the word search myself, but you did so good on the spelling test. I'm going to get you to make the word (gasps) search. And I spelled the word there wrong in the word oh, search. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's the worst thing to do. Uh, was it yeah. as you, you were so embarrassing. Oh, you were so embarrassed. You know, I'm pretty good at actually just like I numbing myself to embarrassment. Really? Yeah. I don't know how. I just, it's kind of like I divert my attention to something else. Like, yeah, that happened, but like it's not that bad. And I just like, so anyway. Oh, embarrass, embarrassment is one of my worst. I hate it. Is there anything good about embarrassment? Is there any um, valuable? I'm like, is, to... Isn't it along the same strain as shame? No, embarrassment. Maybe it's just like an ego thing. Maybe just like, I don't know. It's like when you're embarrassed, maybe it's like taking shots. Maybe it can be a humbling experience. Shame is like you fundamentally are bad, right, what right. you do. But embarrassed, you could just be like, well, like an example would be like, you could be like, I'm the best dancer of them all. And then you just like dance and you fall and then every, everybody's laughs a little bit. Ha, ha, and you're like, oh, I'm so embarrassed. I'm not oh. the best dancer. And that could be like, well, you know, maybe I shouldn't have thought of myself as the best dancer. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then ha ha. And you laugh it off. Right. Because yeah. embarrassment that turns into laughter is pretty awesome. You know what? So maybe what I've done then it, to avoid embarrassment is I'm pretty good at keeping most of the time keeping my ego in check. Like I just continue to um, not debase myself, but just kind of like keep myself in check all the time. I don't I don't get like built up about things usually. So I'm not going to get torn down too bad. Wow. That's that's I, I wish I wish I knew that could feel that it's just but you know what it is it's like going to school without socks in elementary school and having people like you know the like mean girl laugh at you because you never have socks did that happen yeah and just never quite mean girl actually be like oh yeah really yeah just like being like you don't have any socks on and you weren't like yeah i wanted it that way it's hot outside no not at all i just kind of like i I don't remember exactly how i behaved i just remember what happened but were you what do you think you said were you just like uh uh or were you like oh no i'm sad i think i was probably just like yeah i know i don't have any socks on (laughs) oh is that okay yeah yeah i just tried to like deflect and like laugh with them a little bit about it you know that's usually my tactic is just laugh with the just person if you can't about beat yourself them, join them yeah exactly oh, like, okay yeah but no i mean i i For just me it would be like oh, oh wh- why do you have so- socks your socks are stupid uh, don't look at me you know <laughs> it would just i would i would probably just try to push it back at them. right yeah you know it's interesting because i i grew up not really f- ever i never felt like in the upper echelon of people i always felt strange different from everyone else because i was in a family of five kids we lived a little bit out of town compared to where the other kids lived we lived like on a uh, like some farm land and um we didn't really have uh i mean we were theater kids and we had our own kind of style with each other that other kids didn't quite get and then also we didn't always like we never had any of the name brand clothing or any of the nicer school stuff or the nicer lunches or any of those things. Like I was just always in the lower echelon as far as like when kids compare themselves to other kids and that's all the way through school. So now if I ever start to feel like I'm like I'm somehow starting to belong into an upper echelon, I just keep cutting myself down because it doesn't feel comfortable. Do you think that's why you quit uh, being a uh, local famous radio DJ. I definitely think it was uncomfortable for me in that way of having people like you. Talk, you meet so many people, and then every time you are hanging out with these people who know that you, you know, talk on the radio for a living every day, they just kind of treat you a little bit differently, yeah. and it just really messed with me because I so don't identify with being um, better than anybody else, huh. and it and it. I just really didn't know how to handle it. It screwed with my head so much. I hated it. Wow, some people just live for that feeling. Yeah, you know? I do. I just some people cannot. Just lo- would all you know, and that's probably what got you that position. You know, maybe it, you, I don't know. No, I think so because like you, you had to be authentic in order to want to do it. You know, because I think that you could smell inauthenticity when you're applying for a job like that. 
right and because they want somebody who's a little bit more natural on the radio but you know what uh, to be fair to like other you know i was gonna say proper radio <laughs> djs as though i wasn't a proper radio dj but like there are so many people who go into the radio world that is what they want to do right and you don't have to be a person who has a big ego or wants no. to be an elitist in order to want to do that you just have like a passion for that craft yes some totally. people are doing it for egocentric yeah. and you know elitist reasons but there are a ton of great radio djs out there who that is what they wanted to do they set out to do that and it was because they love the craft and i i totally respect that but for me i that was never really my thing like for me i love to perform and write music and i love to write and i love to tell stories but you know and actually, I'm really starting to love um, telling stories through audio. But being a radio DJ in particular, that craft was never really my thing. So mm. it felt like the, um, the the kickback that I was getting from it, the like good stuff that I was getting back from it was just the elitist stuff, right. the stuff that feeds your ego. And it just it felt like so weird. like getting into shows and, and getting the VIP kind of And experience. just kind of being popular because I never had that feeling before. Right. And it was very, I mean, I wasn't unpopular. I had just, I just was the type of person that floated from many different friend groups. I was a drama kid and I was a band kid and I had friends with the just with some of the jocks and you know, I was just kind of a floater. And so <laughs> you <don't>, never mind. <laughs> so <laughs> Okay, continue. <laughs> and so I, you know, uh. being now just like I don't know, a popular easy like it basically my um position made me automatically legit and likable and it made people listen to what I had to say, which I was the fourth youngest kid in my family. I had to fight hard to ever have what I wanted to say heard by anybody. Yeah. And, and now and suddenly sudden, I'm in this position where everybody stops to listen to what I have to say and everything I say has like so much merit or weight. And I'm just like, what? Yeah. This is a weird feeling. Yeah, that would be bizarre. All of a sudden you have this microphone that just speaks to an entire city. I just didn't feel like I earned it, you know, like. But you did. You uh, did. You I, paid your, you did pay your radio dues. Like you Not did, nearly you did, as much as other people did. No, but you did traffic and you have the raw talent to kind of push you to the next level. Like you never like, really had, there's some people that were talking with them. You're like, are you on the radio? And then you hear the radio voice and you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's like they have to just hone in that voice, but you have a nat, your, your radio voice is just your speaking voice. Well, thank you, Johnny. <laughs> yeah but it, it's it's that type of thing where you know these people who set out to be in the radio world that is you know what they really want to do and they worked really hard to get to where they were and that wasn't what i really wanted to do and it was yet the source of all this popularity and and yeah. and legitimacy and i just still felt like i needed to earn it i guess hmm so yeah here i am trying to do my own thing and earn it <laughs> just trying to earn it from scratch so all right but actually i don't i don't even feel like i'm in that world anymore i'm in like my my big purpose right now is just to like do a good job at raising my kid right which sounds so cliche but you know, yeah, I only got one shot at yeah, this with this kid, you know so cliche is okay sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's so funny how we gotta always keep ourselves in check of oh, am I is this the normal thing? Oh, but this is or a like cliche. This, this is the, this should be, but it's funny because sometimes you also want to be normal too, but you don't want to be cliche. But what's the difference? What does cliche mean? What is the definition of cliche? Do you want to look it up? Sure. How do you spell cliche? <laughs> <laughs> it's C L I C H E. Just kidding. I knew. I knew. I was just making a joke. C L I C H E. e. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but it has the E thing. A, a phrase or opinion that is overused and betrays a lack of original thought. Interesting. I love the way they wrote that line. Like it, it, in itself, that line feels Betrays. like it would. It, yeah, in itself, that line feels like it would. It would just like. What am I trying to say? What's the word? Wait, what is it? It would scoff. It would scoff at a cliche saying. Yeah. Just that line in itself <laughs> would. <laughs> it's just like it's. I, I get it. Like a cliche is just like you're. It's like repeating something. It's duplicating something. Mm -hmm. It's like oh, like a. Uh, you're saying it just because other people said it. Almost. Yeah, or, 
or like you're you're in a starting a music project because you really like Radiohead and you just like write almost like Radiohead songs, right? Like you copy them mm-hmm. instead Which of totally pulling from done. the source, right? Of, of you know, yeah, yeah. So, Han, um, what was your highlight from Vietnam? Um, it's all just a blur. If you notice, my eyes are closed. I'm still just like I'm still kind of experience. You know, it's ridiculous because it's been how many days? It's not ridiculous. Four honey. days, but I still like my eyes are like, at it. My eyes are most comfortable closed right now. <laughs> well, like, your oh, first two days boy. back were not spent recovering from jet lag. They were spent recovering from travel diarrhea. S- diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> Coming from peeing out of my butt. Oh my gosh, that was <laughs> Gross. just so awful it was though. Not like, good. it was just. Uh, I was very worried for you. Uh, me too. You've lost some weight. <laughs> I have lost weight, and I love it. You know, if you want to lose weight, get that traveler's diarrhea. Oh my gosh! Can you, where can you buy that? Where can you buy that? Just just drink drink the water wherever you go. <laughs> <laughs> for, right from the tap or from the lake. Drink it. It's good for you. Yeah. In the long run. Just kidding. I'm a I'm not a doctor. I'm, but a, I could I'm a be not a doctor. I, <laughs> I could be a doctor. You're so tired. Oh, so but <laughs> highlight. Um, yeah, highlight. It's hard to say. It all everything bleeds into one. How about mangroves? Because that yeah, cool. experience actually going to the farms. We I went. To I had some, no idea. Can you talk about what a shrimp like what a shrimp farm? It's not just a shrimp farm. This is where shrimp naturally live anyway, right? No, well, it is a is it is a farm. Mm-hmm. So they actually are growing shrimp. I guess, but ah, in a, so in a typical to... natural ecosystem. Yeah, and, yeah. Organic shrimp means that um, the food needs to be the feed for um, the shrimp needs to be provided by the natural environment. Mm, And so it's imperative that the mangroves where they grow are kept in pristine condition. And so the, like the farmers actually like really care about the land and it's important that all the animals are healthy and all the plants are healthy. Not just, yeah. And and there are different types of farms, um, more intensive farms where they like rip out mangroves and they're these like kind of boring little squares in the mm-hmm. earth. And then they just like, just try to get as much shrimp out of, as they possibly can. But on these organic uh, farms, it's all about the ecosystem. So it's it really sounds cool. like they're, yeah, they're looking at a really holistic approach to getting, yeah. to keeping a sustainable source of shrimp. It's like, okay, we're just going to make your living conditions as you would normally have them and make sure they are the best possible mm-hmm. living conditions and it was and it, um i guess the highlight would be um because we visited a few farms and every time we would go and enjoy dinner with the farmers after in their house and they invited that is us so in cool. and it was like beautiful you're just overlooking these mangroves and you're sitting and it's just like the fresh catch i think my favorite thing i ate now that i'm remembering was uh oysters like fresh oysters you didn't tell me about right that right from the river oh and then they what from the oh, river and then there's they, oysters in the river well it's like yeah i guess so or from the mangroves crazy yeah because of yeah what i mean i already was surprised to hear that there was shrimp in those mangrove areas because yeah and then the um and crabs what and then so we're so having this is all, all salt water fresh yeah all of this fresh fish and you're dipping it in sauces and like different spicy oh my god and then you have like like hot pot going over there and then they're just like everybody's cheersing the and then you go yo is the is like the cheers yo's yeah you go yo and then it's like one two three so it's like oh i forget that but but yo and then you just like you're shouting it and then the, oh that's so wild um they just kept filling up my shot glass and I didn't, I never saw them. I think I saw them do it once and I was like, ah, I gotcha. But I would like, we, we would, uh, we'd all do a shot of their homemade rice wine and then we'd be chatting up and they're like, okay, do another one. And then right, like there's a it's full. full one right there. I'm like, what? how did you do that? And then we do it again. And then they like, they, I don't know how they do it, but they just like, they really get you to drink with them. Oh my gosh. And what is it? What is it? It's like Mott High, back, yo, that's what it is. Yo. Mott High, but yo. Mott High, but yo. Mott High, but yo. And we're just shouting it on this, like on their patio, which is like, which is like right where the mangroves are. And it's like, there's no um, railings either. This sounds amazing. Yeah. It's, it's, it was, it was quite beautiful. And the people are just, it's the, yeah, my highlight would be communicating with, um, people that don't speak the same language, but 
after a few shots and once you're just sharing food you just like you're communicating oh, uh, you're just like you're that brings back so many memories yeah, it, it's just it's it's just wonderful it's amazing it so how fun. many other ways you can communicate than through words yeah just like a chuckle or even food and you just like you're just like oh try this try this oh try this and this oh it's goodness. really good and but what really um blew my mind was the quality of the shrimp um we in the west we the most unless it's like bc spot spot prawns mm-hmm. which is spot prawn season in may Ooh, so boy. we've got to take advantage of that mm-hmm. um we're kind of used to like shrimp kind of having like a popping texture or what's what would that texture of shrimp be you it's know a bit of a popping about? texture like, yeah. yeah um that's that comes about during i think the freezing process or like a part like or even when they're like yeah a, a part of the processing to package it and bring it over here across the ocean right oh my gosh um wild shrimp like fresh they don't have that quality they're just like delicious silky like meat oh it's, it was just is it would so you say it's almost like good. crab texture uh, no nah, not no no it's a bit more firm mm-hmm but it was just incredible. Wow. That and sounds so good. And then they had these like little tiny little dried shrimps. And I was just like eating them like crazy. And we're just, yeah, having a good time. Wow. It was just awesome. It was, it was exhausting, but wonderful. It's a lot to recover from. Yeah. Yeah. Just don't drink the water. Or, or, or I, my mistake was uh, the last day. And the, it's all it to- takes is one, one time, right? Mm-hmm. Like I, we would go on walks and I would get like, uh, a beer on the side of the road and they'd pour it right on ice for me. And I was like, this ice is not good ice. Like, mm-hmm. this, the contam- this odds of contamination on this ice are high. And I was just like, you know what? I'm irresponsible right now in this moment. So mm-hmm. I'm going gonna- to, and it was fine. It was the last day at this fancy hotel in Ho Chi Minh city. And I was just like, okay, I'll get an iced coffee to go. And that's what did it. The iced coffee, which iced, it you'd had iced friggin- coffee numerous yeah. times. Oh, I had iced tons on that trip, but it was the last one at the most, at the one place that you would never think. So it's like, right. oh watch out goodness. for that ice. It's, ah, they get But would you, you would you say that you, if you were to do it again, you just wouldn't have any iced coffees on this trip? Jeez, that's, no, that's right? stupid. <laughs> so you'll take a couple of days of terrible tra- uh, traveler's diarrhea. <laughs> I've, um, I'm kind of coming out the other end. <laughs> So now <laughs> I would say I'm like, yeah, I would do it. But like yesterday or the day before, I'd probably be like hard. No, mm. it's weird how you, how it works that way. Oh, Some yeah. people would just be like, no, never not, you know, but I, I'm a sucker for experiences. I mm-hmm. just want those real experiences. Like when one of the night, um, the team or the people I was traveling with, they went to bed early and I was like, ah, I still got energy. So the town we were staying in, uh, Kamau, um, there's no tourists and unlike Ho Chi Minh where most people can kind of speak English, there's like zero English. I was like, I'm just going to walk around and see if somebody invites me to sit down. And, uh, it happened. And it's, it's amazing. Like the hospitality is just like, they would like just be handing me beers. They just want to get you drunk with them. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the what theme. That comes from. That's amazing. Well, it's just like you break down your it's walls. It's merriment and, is what it is. Yeah, it is. And then you can communicate. And then I went, I just sat down with these teenagers and they were doing, we were laughing. They fed me snails. Nice. Um, They're delicious. Did it and, have that pop that it had in Cambodia that made me scream? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But they were cooked. I think you had raw snails. No, I did not. Really? I don't think it was raw. Oh, Ooh. then maybe they did. It was good. I loved it. Okay. And so I had two beers there and then I walked over to these like older. Ah. Oh, and one of them looked exactly like our landlord. I even told him that like on <laughs> Google Translate and they all laughed. <laughs> did Google Translate actually work for you? I don't know. You never know if it does. Right. You, how would you know? Sometimes it's the most confusing thing when they show it to you. <laughs> but uh, we were just like having such a good time. Oh, and they and they, ref- I was just like, can I please pay for my beers? And like, no, absolutely oh not. Just, and they would be like, no, like the thought of that was ridiculous. And then I, yeah, I would just like sit with these guys and yeah, we just We need more laughing. customs like that here. Yeah. It's Whereas just, like but, there's new people and you're just like, there's no way you're paying for this. Yeah, right. But it's it's cool because they have like their community. Everybody, dinner starts around eight when um, the sun goes down because it's like so hot. And everybody mm. just like has, at least in the town we were in, which wasn't a very touristy town at all. 
it wasn't yeah um there's nothing on the internet about it um like yeah you yeah. couldn't you couldn't book this trip right um so because i'm so special <laughs> I get to so the connected most, i'm so no i'm just kidding um but yeah and it was so cool to see all of these people just like they all everybody brings out their food carts and it's just, just like just they bring out tables and just everybody's just everywhere just like eating just like sitting with their like they have their little stove things or i don't know they're burning and then the, what's it called where you like, like a burner? have your own like grill oh it's a, like a hot pot not a hot pot hot oh. pot is like with oh yeah yeah, yeah. your like own soup. little grill yeah that makes, that's probably Everybody, the best and description then you go and you get your barbecue and yeah and then just like as this like the only white dude is Forrest crying? Hold it on. It looks like he's making the grimace. Is he going to bring it to full on crying? Do you want to try this time? Oh, I could try. I just I have to bounce and my tummy is... Oh, your tummy's not feeling good? No. Okay, I'll go in. Okay, pause. Da, da, da. To be continued. And we're back. <laughs> Where am I? Oh man, <laughs> voice sounds that? hilarious. How about was? I don't know. That must have been like I don't know, a half an hour. Yeah, something minutes. like that. He is definitely in a developmental leap right now, and I oh, feel man. like if we listen back to our other podcasts, we'll hear him waking up a lot in the podcasts when he was in his last leap. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Oh man, I'm taking a leap. Yeah, I'm, I'm leaping into dream world right now. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, you know what? Uh, I think that we've gotten the signal. Yeah, that's it. It's time to wrap wrap things up. Let's wrap it. Thanks. Wrap thanks it with for a bow. for hanging out with us. Yeah, having thank a you conversation. For wow, we really appreciate you so much mm-hmm. taking the time out of your day to listen. Yeah. To two weirdos talk. Yeah, just about it, our it, about their kid. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Getting in, involved in some merriment with us. Yeah. Wow. We are gonna do this again next week. Yes. And the week after. And then after that, we'll do more. We love you so much, man. I've, I've, uh, I'm, I was fully asleep like a second ago. <laughs> let's just, let's just. I want to go brush my teeth. I'm gonna yeah, get in bed. Too. Oh, bed sounds okay, so bed, good bed, right now. Bed, okay, bed, 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 we bed. love you. Bye. <laughs> Gotta love a soft ending to a conversation before it was actually supposed to end. Well, hey, you know what? This happens. This is parent life. Thank you again for listening to the Merriman Podcast. We are going to do this again next week. Don't forget to subscribe so it just automatically pops up in your podcast app when it's ready to go. Also, why don't you find us on social? We can continue some conversations we've had here. We're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and on YouTube. You just search Carly and Johnny. 